Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. This is uh, what I hope to be the final installment in this series. This is part five of the mid-70s Chromacolor 2. And uh, in the last video we did sort out the color problems finally. And uh, there are a couple of problems that still remain. One is the high voltage blooming and a new problem that's popped up is the lack of degaussing which uh, I've got a replacement thermistor for so hopefully that will take care of that. Now as far as the blooming problem uh, both Radio TV Phono Nut and uh, Tom uh, pointed out to me that there were cross references for the original tripler that turned out to be wrong and I think the 528A should be the 526 as mentioned by Brian however Tom did me one better and got me a found me a link to an NOS uh, tripler kit from Zenith which was supposed to be the updated part which I've received we're going to install that today see if that works but going back to the first video when I did the initial power on and test Yes, the focus was crummy because the tripper, the focus divider network was bad, but there was no blooming. So the fact that I introduced the blooming problem tends to further support the problem with the replacement tripler. So uh, it just may not be right for this application since the internal uh, divider network of the 526 and the 528 are different. So uh, there's that. So let me show you a picture of the thing that I got. So this is the replacement tripler we're looking at. This is where I got it from. Uh, it was not very expensive at all, very reasonable. They have a bunch of these, so uh, if you're a Zenith guy, you might want to snatch some of these up. Anyway, it's an NOS part. It's the 977.36. It's supposed to replace the uh, 212-41. And it's definitely new old stock. Lots of dust and crust included. But uh, here's the replacement tripler. And as you can see, it sure looks a lot like the other one. Uh, I think there's maybe one more tap. I'm not sure. We'll have to look at this. But it does come with the little booklet instruction guide there. Let's put this down on a flat surface. So this is where the pause button is used. Uh, for replacement of 212-141 or 212-141-01. Important, some original units used a clear plastic anode cap requiring silicon grease. Uh, use silicon grease when blah blah blah. Okay, rubber sealant, yada yada yada, to prevent arc over and corona. Uh, otherwise, there you go. So that's the tripler. And there's all your connections there. If it will focus, come on. Uh, pretty cool. Anyway, um, I guess the next thing is to get this thing in the set and see if it works and pull the 528 out. And while we're in there, we'll replace the little thermistor that's busted. Alright, so I got the tripler in. Uh, now I'm going to try to get the degaussing thermistor in. And this is what I got here. The original was supposed to be 18 ohms cold. I think this was pretty close. This was like 17 or 20 or somewhere in that range. But that's the new part that I have to wedge in there. So, as you can see, it wasn't very expensive. So I'm just going to get that in there and see uh, if we can get our degaussing back and put it all back together, power it up, and see what happens next. And yeah, here's the thermistor. I just cut the leads off of the old one, left enough that I could attach it to it. It's tight in there, so but it is in there, and it's secured, and it's not going to bust free. So now it's a matter of putting this all back together, and then we'll fire it up. All right, it's all back together. It's time to see if our uh, efforts paid off, if it flies or if it fries. Get high voltage, that's a good sign. Wakey, wakey. Alright, well it's warming up. Look at that, minimal blooming. That's good. Makes me a little happier. 
interesting how my convergence is off. All right. Convergence is way off. How weird. Maybe that has something to do with the uh, high voltage. Well, anyway, let me come back here and adjust the focus and see if I can clean it up a little. There we go. Rock solid. That's as sharp as a tack. Camera don't show it though. You can see the scan dots now. And no scary blooming when I turn it up. There's a little tiny bit, but nowhere near what it was. Okay, let's go to our color bars. Oh look, I have color. How nice. And let's see if we can tune that a little bit better. That looks good. Rainbow looks good. It's weird how my uh, I find that very strange that my convergence is off as a function of this. And then I've got those uh, color distortion patterns there. I think that was a, there before. I think that's the crosstalk adjustment. Hang on a second, I'm going to try to tweak that one. Makes it worse. Makes it worse, makes it worse. Eh, it's about where it's going to settle on. Sorry, it's blinking. It's actually a little bit brighter now, too. And tint. Tint range. I need to tweak that a little bit. But otherwise, it's working. And I could use a little more brightness. The contrast is good. But the brightness is kind of pathetic. But no more blooming. Very nice. And let's see, as it's warming up, let's look at our... Uh, yeah, see, our static convergence still sucks. We zoom in here. That's not great. Don't know why that is. But let's see if we can fix that. I'm going to touch up the convergence a little bit here, and then we'll see if we can increase the brightness some. Alright, so I got the convergence dialed in here. It looks pretty freaking sweet. You can see nice sharp scan lines there. Very little errors. And then of course the uh, beautiful color rainbow. Looks really good. It's sharp. It's not blooming. The bars look good. I've got all the chromatic adjustments set. The brightness level uh, is maxed out and I am just getting above normal uh, normal black levels there. It's not great. But it does produce a decent picture for now, so I think maybe I'll just leave it alone. Uh, I'm going to really quickly go over the schematic and see if there's something I've missed, but otherwise it looks pretty sharp. Alright, so coming to the brightness problem, uh, if we come back here to the luminance board, Q904, which is that guy there, is our brightness our final video driver and my supply voltage on 904 is supposed to be about 15.7 volts at 16.38 uh, here on the base I'm supposed to have 6 volts but I've only got 4.5 and likewise on the emitter I'm supposed to have uh, 5.3 and I've got 4.1 
and uh, this device is getting not warm at all like it's not pushing enough current the other ones here these first video and limiters and blanking they're all kind of warm and the voltages on all these are correct but this is low except for the collector voltage so my suspicion is is that that transistor is getting tired it could be very much getting tired so it's really a matter of pulling it apart taking the transistor out and testing it uh, and I think we'll do that and see what the betas look like because I think that that transistor just may be tired alright so the transistor checker says it's got a gain of 173 so I don't think it's the transistor that's the issue now that's a, a healthy healthy beta for a video amp in that stage so I think we'll leave that one be alright so looking at this more in depth uh, coming down here to the third video amp this is the problem that I have uh, on the base it's supposed to be 6.09 it's about 4.8 and it varies uh, at maximum brightness it's down to like 4.3 the emitter is about 4.1 or 4.0 it's very low fours so that's obviously that transistor is not conducting well enough to pass the video signal through uh, scoping up here I have good video information good video signal so I don't think that that's it the limiter is not on uh, if the limiter was on, it would be pulling down the collector voltage to Q901 there. And I have about 16 volts on the collector of Q904. Uh, excuse me, 904. Uh, the supply voltage is good. Uh, and then I'm coming down here to the emitter circuit of Q904. And then you have this uh, uh, filter here. And then you've got this thing between 73 and 74, CR902, which is the isolator. And according to this, C902, there's a jumper there. There's obviously depicted a jumper. And likewise on my board, there's also a jumper, CR902 there. So I'm guessing that that's just kind of how it is, even though they depict it on the schematic. Uh, or excuse me, CR901. Is that what I'm looking at, looking at there? Uh, no, 901 has a diode. Uh, 901 down here is your blanking, which is still present on the board, but the 902 isn't. So, yeah. Not sure what that's about, but obviously it's depicted here. 901 is there, and 902 is a jumper. So I guess that's how it's supposed to be, but... Anyway, that's where we're at with this thing, is trying to figure out why this third video amp circuit isn't getting enough voltage. And I've got good video information here on the scope, but uh, and this 330 ohm resistor down here, this is okay. Uh, if this were shorted, that would pull down this voltage, or maybe it wouldn't because of the 12K resistor there. Uh, it's supposed to limit it. I don't think it would kill it. I could test that. Uh, the limiter circuit isn't active. I've got zero volts on the base, zero on the emitter, and about six on the collector, so that's kind of where it's supposed to be. So this one's uh, kind of stumping me a little bit. I'm not really sure we're left to go on this one. But something in that third video amp circuit is not working correctly. I've checked the blinkers. Uh, these are all within spec here. In fact, the base voltage on this is a little bit high, but so is the collector voltage. So there's still, uh, this is not really blanking the screen. This vertical blanking, blanking driver here is if you lose vertical, it cuts off the video so you don't burn a trace into your screen, which is kind of smart. Uh, but all of this in this area appears to be working and within close enough voltages that I'm not going to worry about it. So that's what we're looking at right now. That's why it's not getting any more brightness. I do have to check the voltages here at the entry point and make sure this is good. Uh, because this is a little low, but this is really low. 
So, yay, more troubleshooting. Well, this is awkward. I went to go test the set again and turn the machine on. I don't know if you can see that, but smoke's coming out of the tripler and the circuit breaker blew. So, yeah. That's great. It's a nice big cloudy haze of smoke in here. So it looks like the tripler decided to die. Horizontal output didn't get hot, so I'm guessing it shorted internally. But that's new old stock parts for you. What a bummer. I was all ready to do the setup adjustments for the uh, brightness limiter and look into the circuit a little bit more and it just decided to die. So let's do some brief reconnaissance and see what obviously took a dump. Well the good news is it's not the flyback that cooked. Uh, that resistor down there is what all the noise was about and that feeds uh, this pin down here, pin 23 on the vertical, which is one of the, uh, excuse me, actually pins, fits that one down there, which is that blanking transistor there, so I have to check that. Hopefully I didn't injure that. The reason why that died is because idiot here put the luminance board in upside down. Uh, it's corrected now, but I put it in upside down not paying attention and caused myself some more trouble so now I gotta look and see what value that resistor is it looks like a fat boy like a 2 watt or something like that figure out what that is get that ordered out and then we have to thoroughly check the uh, transistors here on the vertical board uh, so yeah don't be stupid kids pay attention I was not so I just created more headaches for myself so now let's find out what that is okay well the smoked resistor was uh, this guy here 4.7 ohm 1 watt although I think it looks a little bit bigger than that uh, that shares the line with the luminance board that I put in upside down uh, if we trace if we trace this line, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see here. If we trace this guy and we go to the next page and we're following this line. Let's see, are we? Are we really? Okay, so we're following this line here uh, until it gets to this point over here which is labeled 119. Uh, and so we had the board in upside down, so I was probably feeding some scary voltage to that, and that's why it, or some, something killed it. Anyway, uh, got the board in right. I'm going to verify really quick here under the part parts list that R203 is in fact that. Let's see here if we can look at the, Luminance schematic here. Sorry for the Moyer pattern, it's just how it is. And let's see, resistors, power in special. They don't depict it here. You got R200. Okay, so we're looking for 203 controls. Making you dizzy yet? Uh, let's see, where's the rest of the resistors? One thing that sucks about doing it on a computer like this is you have to kind of look for it. Let's uh, zoom out again. Semiconductors, capacitors, 
All right, well, that's where this starts. Lots of small value capacitors in this one. I see power in special, but I don't see anything else. Interesting. All right, so just coming over here to this cook looking resistor. It actually still has a value of 3.4 ohms. I am going to replace it. And then we'll uh, see what else has been hurt. Let me check the vertical module real quick. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and check these components here and see if anything got hurt. No shorts, that's good. Let's go here. That survived. And that survived. And then we've got these little driver transistors back in here. Let's see if they got hurt. Looks like that one survived. And then the other one over here. All right. So nobody's shorted. That's good. Uh, let's do a brief check here on the aluminum board that I put it upside down. I think that officially disqualifies me from technical abilities today. Okay, so I'm going to measure the video output transistor. That's okay. No short there. Okay, no short there. No short there. Alright, so I appear appears that I did okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's see if some by some weird happenstance I hurt the horizontal out. I don't think so. No short there. No short there. Okay. All right, now let's replace that silly little resistor and then uh, power it on and see if we have signs of life or if I hurt something else. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if we hurt anything else. Wakey, wakey. No luminance whatsoever. Yeah, something else must have got hurt. Got high voltage, but no video now. So we got to find out what's going on with that. I probably hurt something else in the video board putting it upside down. So let's see. Okay, well, while originally it didn't look like anything was wrong, uh, the video output transistor here got cremated. Yeah, there's no shorts, but the base emitter junction's open, so we're going to replace that. I've checked the other transistors. Uh, oh yeah, that 330 ohm jobber there got toasty too, so we're going to replace them. As you can see, I got nice locating arrows up, up, up. Uh, remember to do that. So we'll get that squared away and get the thing popped back in the chassis. As far as the vertical module goes, this appears to be fine. The terminals uh, that this connects to are that uh, that connects to that 4.7 ohm resistor that Cook uh, goes up to this capacitor here, C712, and so that would block 
any DC voltage from hurting the driver section. I have pulled and tested these out of circuit, so they're okay. I think the vertical's fine, uh, but we just need to fix that video module over here, replace that bad transistor in the 330 ohm, and hopefully we're back in business. Alright, so after some minor repairs on my screw-ups, we're back to a raster again. So let's get back to troubleshooting that brightness problem. So basically what it comes down to right now, what we're experiencing, is that you can turn the brightness all the way up, and that's your black level right there. That's as good as it gets. And you can turn it down so that there's nothing. But watch this. As I turn the brightness up really quick, see how it was bright momentarily and then it got weak again? Almost like brightness limiter circuits kicking in. But yet when I go to the brightness limiter transistor on the video board, it's not uh, showing any signs of the base turning on. In fact, let me get a meter on it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so on the brightness limiter circuit, if everything's working correctly we should have zero volts on the base of Q902 or on the low side of R904. Okay so I'm on the low side of R904 and we have zero volts right now and even as I turn up the brightness momentarily we can see that that voltage doesn't change at all so there's no feedback from the brightness limiter circuit that would be turning on that transistor and pulling down the uh, pulling down the uh, brightness with the brightness limiter circuit. So the limiter circuit's not activating. So that's not it. The limiter circuit is not it. However, one important thing I notice here is that the third video amp right here, when I turn the brightness up, the base and emitter voltages get pulled way down, like two volts down, even though the collector voltage remains constant. So this circuit here, from the brightness control, this is getting pulled down. Now when that happens, you have to look at the load on this transistor, which would be in the collector circuit. And the only thing next up in the collector circuit is on the video output board, which is the video output train, the final video output transistor or the Y amplifier. And I'm pretty sure that that Y amplifier is that old Motorola T05 spaceship looking dude right there. That's probably the one that's responsible. And if I just put my finger on it, it's toasty, but not like burning toasty. And the thing to figure out would be, is, it, is the voltage on this dropping when you crank the brightness up? That would be the thing to ask. That's something we got to find out. Alright, so just doing some brief measurements. When I look at the base voltage on this, with no brightness, it's 24 volts. But as soon as I start to turn the brightness up even a little, that voltage drops tremendously. It goes all the way down to about 16 volts. That's a hell of a drop. That's almost 10 volt drop. So I suspect that transistor is just tired. So we really need to compare it with the schematic and then see what needs to be replaced in order to make that function again because that's significant. That's big. Now according to this, that emitter voltage is supposed to be at a fixed 15 volts there and there's a CR102 which is the limiter Zener diode and then our base voltage is going way up too uh, it's like six it's with the brightness up it's 16 volts uh, with the uh, brightness down it's like 24 volts well the collectors at ground um, so really, if we need to double check the emitter voltage, obviously, and see if it's a fixed emitter voltage. Uh, it should be. It should be exactly 15 volts. If it's going up and down, then that tells you that the Zener diode there, CR1202, uh, isn't doing its job. It's supposed to be a stabilizer for the video driver transistor. So we need to look at that. However, if that's okay, if the emitter voltage doesn't change very much or changes very little, and it's the base voltage just swinging wild, 
uh, then that tends to suggest that the transistor has got a low beta or it's starting to open and we need to further explore that but uh, that's looking like where we're at right now so let me do a couple more checks and let's figure out what's going on here alright so if I poke around here and we take a look at our emitter the emitter is about 16 volts and that currently is at about medium brightness. If I crank it all the way up and we take our measurement again hasn't changed much Ooh, hasn't changed much let's put it in the right spot there yeah 1629 instead of 1666 so if we go all the way to minimum brightness and we take that measurement again it's gone up to 17.9 which is kind of that's okay that's not great but it's not swinging wildly now if I go to the base of this video driver transistor which is supposed to be a relatively fixed voltage and we check out the base here right now at minimum brightness it's 23.39 volts that's really high that's really high and if we crank this up and we get to about mid brightness of middle of the brightness control range this voltage now drops to 17 volts. Now if we turn it up to maximum brightness the screen isn't that bright looking but now we're down to 16.9 volts and that's versus the 16.3 volts so there's six tenths of a volt across this device it is quote unquote on uh, but we're not seeing very much change here the fact that I've got the brightness all the way up and that's as we should be seeing a very white raster right now and the fact that it reacts slowly like that uh, we need to pull that transistor and check it. I have a feeling that that transistor is tired and it needs to be replaced. So let's get it out and see what it looks like. Let's see what the transistor checker thing says. So that's a beta of 61. I'm not sure if that's uh, really hot enough to work in a video driver environment. I'm going to check it really quick for leakage and see what shows up there well it's not leaky but I'm concerned about the low gain so let's take a look at what a 952-352 is well replacing the transistor didn't do squat it's pretty much behaving the same let's see what happens if we go to the base now 16.8 at full brightness and if we turn the brightness down up to 20 so that ain't it there's still something else going on here probably maybe it is the brightness limiter circuit but yet if I come over here we got no activity on that transistor and on the emitter we should have like 5 volts or something like that and 5 volts on the collector now let's see where the emitter is supposed to be at. Yeah, looks good. Uh, zero on the base, zero on the emitter. Emitter's at ground. Uh, and I have 578 there, so that's that capacitor probably isn't shorted. Uh, but I'm still not getting enough drive here. Like this sags, this base voltage sags when I turn the brightness up. So what's causing that? And I know this isolation diode isn't there on the board, but it also isn't there in the schematic either. Or, excuse me, uh, it's also not there on the picture of the board. Like, there's your CR902, and they just have a jumper there, which is what my board has. So that's strange there. And let's just take this over here. So if we come over to our video drive transistor, we're supposed to have like, what does it say? 5.57 on the emitter. 
of this video driver transistor here. And we've got 4.8 and I believe no, that's not even full brightness, that's minimum brightness. So already we're short here. Oh, there we go. Minimum brightness 5.58. So that's right on the mark at minimum brightness. And then if I go to the base here, it should be 609, but it's only 5.8. So that's weird. But uh, as I turn the brightness up to a normal level, or what's perceived as a normal level, the emitter voltage goes down to 4 volts and the base goes down to 4.5 so this transistor is still on but it's like sagging big time and I think when I pulled it it had a, a good beta like a beta of 200 or something so that comes from U4 on the video board and as I recall the waveforms looked okay and I'm trying to figure out how they actually derive the brightness from the circuit. Are they trying to pull down the emitter and turn it on more? Uh, or maybe this is just I may have a good beta but maybe it's just lost and maybe there's something wrong with it. So I could try substituting this transistor real quick, the third video amp uh, that guy right there if it'll focus yeah we could try substituting him and see if that changes anything and I've got good voltage on the collector there on the collector I've got the 15 volts or whatever it wants 1635 and that doesn't change so I don't know let's try substituting that just as a grins and giggles and see if that changes anything so here's the device, beta 173. Doesn't have any leakage, but uh, it could just be that a junction's starting to open or something's going wrong. So let's pop something else in there, see if that changes anything. So with the substitute transistor, it doesn't like that there's any other change. It's still doing that get bright and then uh, get not bright. Although it is slightly brighter. I also noticed that if I wrap on it, we get these little dot dash things in the picture. Almost like there's a loose or bad connection or something. Very interesting. And just playing around with things. I don't see any changes. The flickery dot dash thing is new. Almost like it's trying to do something, but it's not. Let's see what our base voltage looks like now with the uh, new transistor in. Yeah, still pulled down too far. So it just makes me wonder. I've got no activity here not even a tiny little bit even in millivolts is 0.3 millivolts whoop de doo and that's at ground and then the other thing is 5 volts or whatever so yeah this is a puzzler something in that brightness limiter circuit's not happy I mean it is slightly brighter with the new video transistor in there But it's like there's no brightness range. And if I tweak the brightness limiter pot, there's like no change there either. So that makes me wonder. It really does. See, I get tons of contrast, but no black level. Makes me wonder if there's something going on with that brightness limiter circuit that I just can't see nominally from these readings. So, uh, let's see here. Let's see if we can do the setup adjustments. This freaking is new. 
I wonder if that's a function of some sort of oscillation in that new video driver transistor I put in. Since it didn't help, I think I'll go back to the old one. Alright, so the brightness limiter adjustment doesn't work. Following the directions here, disconnecting the IF, there is a, uh, you connect across the output resistor of the green uh, video output, and you're supposed to adjust it with brightness and contrast at max for 0.55 volts. So, but what's happening here is, is when I attempt to do that, I get 0.262. And if I adjust the brightness limiter control, there is zero change. Zero change. So the fact that it's not coming up to the proper voltage definitely is indicative of a failure of the brightness limiter circuit. So the next video is going to be troubleshooting that because that seems to be the last link in the chain. Uh, even though I've got a white raster here, it's just not enough. It's supposed to be that voltage and it's less than half of that voltage, so that explains the low brightness problem. So that'll be in the next video, likely, unless I can come up with a magic bullet fix right now. So from the schematic, it looks like the way that they derive the brightness limiter circuit is on the reference tap of the tripler, which is nominally supposed to go to ground, you've got a 500 ohm resistor, 7 watt there, that uh, drops down uh, a voltage, which is then supposed to go to the Zener diode. And then from that voltage, uh, the brightness limiter control from the center tap feeds that voltage and if we just trace this out here if I can trace this out that feeds it back to the uh, I have to go to the next page here hang on hang on that's why I don't like computerized schematics anyway that feeds back uh, to the brightness limiter pin there and then to that transistor. Uh, now the fact that it also goes to, um, or at least the schematic would appear so. Let's see here. On the video output port there's a limit control too. Well I don't see it depicted here. It is on the uh, board. Of course that could be an independent circuit. But anyway, um, what we need to do is we need to check and see what CR216 is. What kind of Zener diode is that? And let's go back to our parts list. 216. That's a seven and a half volt Zener diode. It's hard to see that. CR216. 7.5 volt Zener diode. So in theory, on the low side of that big resistor on the tripler, we should be seeing about 7.5 volts. At least that would be the thought. 7.5 volt Zener diode. And the fact that it's not doing anything, we need to check here and see if that voltage is present. Uh, it's not supposed to go higher than 7.5 volts, otherwise we're going to get too much feedback and that's going to cause the brightness limiter circuit to kick in. Uh, the fact that it's not allowing that voltage to go through uh, would tend to suggest that. Now there's a 10 ohm 2 watt resistor on the low side of that as well, so we need to see if that's still there. 10 ohm, or excuse me, let's see here. I'll look at the 50 ohm is the control itself and then 10 ohm 2 watt to ground. So we need to measure from the low side of the control to make sure that 10 ohm 2 watt resistor is there. Because if it's not, uh, that would be, uh, that would cause the voltage to go up. Of course then that voltage and current would be too high for this and that would probably short which would then bring this down. Uh, yeah. So we're going to take a look at that real quick and see what our measurements are. 
Alright, so there's your reference terminal right there with the big fat resistor. So let's see what our resistance is to ground here. So that's pretty good. Uh, and then, let's see, down here, let's see if I can illuminate this a little better. Looking for that 10 ohm 2 watt. It's probably there because we're we're getting conductivity to ground. If that 10 ohm 2 watt resistor were open, we would not be getting that conductivity to ground. So uh, the fact that I have something here, 80 ohms, might be a little bit high, but that shouldn't provide no adjustability. We should get something out of that, just something. Now another question is, is if I tweak this control, hang on here, if I freaking tweak this control a little bit, does it, does it change the resistance value? It doesn't. Almost like one leg of that control ain't going anywhere. So maybe this control is bad, this brightness limiter control, because tweaking it really doesn't do much of anything. Uh, I should be able to get down into the 10 ohm range there. So let's see, where do they attach this? Can I see where they attach this thing at? It's down on a terminal strip at the bottom. And da -da 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 -da. Yeah, sorry about that. Trying to see what I'm doing here. Interesting. So on... Yeah, i got to put the camera down. Hold on. Okay, so right now on the low side of that control to ground, we've got 22 ohms. It shows a 10 ohm resistor here, not 22. 10 ohms. Um, but yeah, uh, on the high side of that... We got, so this 50 ohm control is there, and let's see if adjusting this, yeah, so I can turn this all the way down to 22, and I can turn it all the way up. So this control is active, alright, this control is active, so the control is not bad. Um, out of curiosity. Let's see if we've got that regulated voltage there. We should have that regulated voltage. There should be something there. Um, and let's look at the high side of the control rather than the low side since it's coming right off of there. But um, yeah, no voltage. No voltage at all. I should be getting something. 500 ohm, 7 watt. Uh, but I'm not getting any voltage there at all. You'd think I would be getting something. Maybe AC? Yeah, it doesn't matter. AC or DC. I got nothing. Um, so the next thing to do would be to ohm... Well, actually... We get the top end of the control measured as from here, so maybe this 500 ohm jobber is open because we're not getting any voltage. And if this zener were shorted, we'd see a hard short to ground, and we don't. We're measuring through the control. So that 500 ohm 7 watt is suspect. Uh, it really is. Very strange. Why would that die? Well, the 500 ohm jobber is still 500 ohms. That's weird. Um, so now, let's see here. Uh, if I can prop this up well enough to work with it here. Uh, let's see if that even gets there. Yep, we've got continuity there. 
and we've got 29 there and okay well the line to the low side of the resistor to that is getting there very interesting so one would suspect since I'm not getting any voltage uh, that that zener is in fact bad it doesn't show a short though but I guess it's such a low impedance that that might piss it off a little bit uh, yeah that's really strange so I think that's going to be the next video uh, is locating that diode replacing it see what happens uh, because I'm not getting any voltage I am not getting any voltage on the low side of that resistor. I'm not going to measure on the high side because that could kill my meter. Uh, or not, I really don't know. But in any case, um, yeah, that's kind of strange. I should be getting some sort of voltage here. At least that would be the assumption. And I'm getting zero. So it's almost like there's no feedback at all. Or course let's check something else here uh, da -da 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 -da. hang on just a second yep nope even when I crank the brightness up all the way I don't get much of anything so yeah there's that I mean we've got a raster on the screen but there's no voltage there ah uh, goodness and I don't know if I want to try measuring across that resistor because it might hurt something. I'm not sure what voltages are there. Granted, it's the low side of the tripler. It's supposed to go to earth or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's no voltage whatsoever there. So I wonder what's going on with that. Anyway, I'm going to button this up for now, but at least we've made headway as to what's happening. Uh, I would assume there's supposed to be some kind of voltage there. There's not. So, yeah. Gotta look into that. Anyway, for now, there's more of the crazy chroma color. More stuff to come soon.